Uh, my name is Dennis Schlack. I'm the Customer Success Manager here at D3 Technologies. And I just want to thank you for attending this week's webinar, Cloud-Based Technologies. In this session, we're going to take a look at an array of cloud and mobile tech <laughs> introduced by Autodesk in the last several years, uh, such as mobile apps, apps for your desktop software, A360 Team, and Fusion 360. In addition, uh, we'll also be introducing the concept of technology consumption gap. Next week's session will cover data management. Simon Taprick, Solutions Executive here at D3, will be your host, and Kim Hendricks will be your presenter. I encourage you to attend, attend this, as this has been Kim's passion for several years, and I promise you, you will gain some knowledge during her presentation. For today, we have Ryan Johnson, Senior Implementation Consultant from D3's technical team, as your presenter. If you have any questions as we go through the presentation, at the end, we will provide a means to get them answered. A brief word about D3. Uh, we are the top integ integrator for Autodesk Manufacturing Solutions, offering a wide range of products and services to help our customers design better and manufacture better. Our services at a glance uh, basically include training, whether public, private, individual, and even corporate training plans. Our tech support covers phone support, live chat, email, and we even have the capabilities of remoting in to help you walk through any problems you might be having. We also offering one-on-one -on -one mentoring with general Q&A to, to uh, project consulting. Uh, we have implementation, best practices, consulting, automation of engineering, uh, including design and sales. So this morning I'd like to uh, introduce you to Ryan Johnson. He is going to be covering this for you. Thank you. So we'll be talking a little bit about cloud technology from Autodesk here. The webinar coordinator introduced you to a theory called the consumption gap. The book Complexity Avalanche, shown here, defines the consumption gap as the difference between the potential value a product could provide to an end user compared to the value it's actually providing today. In the book, J.B. Wood defines this top curve as the addition of features and complexity in technology in recent years. So this applies to all sorts of industries, not only the engineering software we'll be discussing today, but even industries such as cell phones, cars, TVs. Uh, we see the same thing happening. Bottom curve here shows the trend of users to consume those features without assistance. So at D3, we want you to get the maximum value out of what you currently own and have available to you. So our goal here is to minimize this consumption gap. To do that, we're going to be covering a few workflows and tools that we see as being underutilized or even not even used at all. Um, We'll be going through these main topics, mobile apps, this would be uh, apps that run on a smartphone or tablet, the Exchange App Store, which allow you to easily add tools and features to your desktop software, Cloud Collaboration, we'll be taking a look at A360 Team, and then Cloud Design Tools using Fusion 360 to uh, build designs. So we're going to get started with mobile apps first. So I'm going to jump onto my tablet here, and we're going to start out with AutoCAD 360. With AutoCAD 360, we can actually run AutoCAD on our tablet or smartphone. And so I'm just going to open a sample drawing here, a mechanical sample. And we'll do a few things. Uh, very easy to navigate, pinch to zoom, and pan. And we have access to layer information from the source drawing. Also tools like zooming and different view tools. Additionally, you have properties, blocks, the design feed. Um, some of these are available in the pro version, some of them in the preload version. So I want to, first of all, I want to kind of inspect this drawing. So I want to do a distance measurement. We're maybe in the field and we're checking this. And you'll notice very um, easy to use. We have snaps that allow us to get accurate measurements. And here I've noticed that this is actually not the correct measurement. 
it. So I'm going to just drag to draw a revision cloud here. And I'm actually working on the DWG file from my A360 drive. So we'll go ahead and add some text describing what we um, what we found here. This is the wrong length, and we need to fix it before it gets to production. Right, so I'm done. I'm just going to enter this. Now let's move this text around a little bit. Very easy to uh, click and drag to modify any object in AutoCAD. You'll notice the snap points there make it easy to accurately position things as well. Now another thing I want to do is add a note to the design feed. And if you're not using this, you, you know the design feed is a panel inside of AutoCAD. So since I'm working on the actual UVG drawing here, we'll associate a point with this note here. And when I save this back to the cloud, my user sitting at the computer will be able to see in the design feed that I've added this level one revision that we need to make. And we'll go ahead and post that. So very easy to do. Also notice we can export this file. Also we can add reviewers and collaborators right here from the app. So pretty nice tools all in the free AutoCAD 360 app. And my changes are automatically saved back to the cloud. So we're going to jump into a second app now. Um, we're going to take a look at the sketchbook briefly. So sketchbook can be a nice tool for a design review, documenting changes. Here I'm going to insert an image, and I'm just activating the camera on my device to take a picture of something that I found out in the shop that needs to be changed. And so I just add that right into my sketching canvas. If you don't know, Sketchbook is uh, basically drawing and sketching tools. You can use it for things like this as well very easily. So I've added a new layer, and on this layer I'm going to add some notes. Um, basically, the guys, somebody flipped these things around and they're in the wrong side. So I just want to quickly send out a note to somebody that, hey, we need to take a look at this. So we'll just go ahead and sketch that out. Like I said, they are layered, so you can get pretty complex with these. I'm going to go ahead and share this now out to my A360 app so that my people in the shop can see my feedback right away. So just click on A360 there. We just need to pick the project that we want to add it to. I'll add it to the D3VU project here. And as soon as it's uploaded, it will become available. So I'm going to just swipe down from the top here and check out that file. A360 has notified me that there's a new file ready to view. Now download it to my device, and there you go. Image in the notes that I just now sent available to my shop. We're going to change gears here. We're going to take a look at an app called Force Effect. This is a really cool app for uh, simulating forces. And so you notice in some of those previews, you can even draw right on top of a photograph of the structure and uh, you know just get some estimated values. Um, this structure that I've drawn is very accurate. You'll notice all of the elements have specific sizes. We have forces and reactions being calculated as I drag the elements around in real life. Life. I'm going to add an extra force, and so it's just click and drag, and we want to fine-tune that value, so I'm just going to type in exactly what I want it to be. Bounds force. I'm going to add another one. 
if I don't want anything on here, all of the items are very easy. We just click. We get a small radio menu, so it's very easy to just delete that. I had clicked the wrong thing. I'm going to take a look at the report that we can get from this. So just by clicking the report button, we'll get a nice documentation of all of our loads and our setup, and then even details on each element in the simulation, graphs, values. It's pretty cool. Just from the app, I'm able to get some very accurate information, do some nice live studies. We also have a force effect tool called force effect motion. This allows us to run motion simulations, graph, acceleration, velocity, and things like that over time. And so here's a sample. And basically, we've built some elements. We've added an actuator. So when I hit the play button here, you'll notice this actuator spins and all of my parts move accordingly. Uh, I want to get some more data out of this, so I'm just going to long press on these points and add a tracking point. Once we get the tracking point, we're able to track those and get some data out. And I also like to see the path that these are taking for this example. So now when I hit play, you'll notice each one of those points is incremental data points through time. Now even going back the other way, of what kind of forces and speeds are happening during that time. We'll go ahead and stop that and just quickly to take a look at the graph here. Um, let's take a look at the more detailed report again. And so we're going to get displacement, velocity, acceleration. Um, Nice graphs. So again, my data is automatically saved when I return. So we're going to take a look at one more app, the Publisher mobile app. This is one of my favorites. Um, if you're using Publisher for any of your technical documentation, play the uh, videos and documentation right on a tablet or smartphone. Pretty cool. So I'm just going to navigate to this pedals demo. Um, you guys may have seen in one of our previous webinars on Publisher. Um, this time we're taking a look at it right in the mobile app. So zoom, pan, rotate, really easy to do. Here I can even get detailed information uh, from the inventor properties by double clicking on any part. Just a really nice interface. Now if hit play and it's actually going to step through the presentation that I built in Publisher. At any time, you can start zooming or orbiting, and the animation will stop. But you can see the details of what's going on. Also, you can drag the time slider to step through at your own pace. Here, I've added some torque notes to this. Um, scrub right to that exact moment. You can also step through the steps one at a time. So you can imagine being on a you know production floor or something, and being able to actually see the product built, or maybe, you know, instructions for a customer to disassemble something or replace a filter. We also have the ability here to jump straight to specific snapshots. And very good help system right there inside of the program, describing all the navigation, everything you can do with it. This is the a publisher mobile app, one of my favorite ones on the App Store. Okay, so our next topic is the Exchange App Store. These are extensions, tools, add-ins that run right inside of your Autodesk desktop software. So. We're taking a look at uh, Inventor here, and I have a model that I've designed. Um, up here on the top info center, you'll notice the X icon we can click, and it takes us straight to the 
Exchange App Store or whatever program we launch it from. So here we're looking at the Inventor Tools. A lot of stuff in here. Uh, we can jump straight to a topic on the side. Also, we have some featured, some popular apps that are showing up. Cool Orange Thread Modeler. This is one we're going to take a look at here. This is one very popular app. Basically allows you to automatically create physical threads instead of the inventor's simulated thread. So maybe you are 3D printing your part and you need some physical threads. You notice Cool Orange, when I ran it, added its own button, its own tab. Basically, I just select threads in the browser. It can be exterior, interior threads, multiple sizes. Cool Orange is going to take those and convert them automatically using a template into physical features. So we now see the physical threads added to my model. That revolves coils. I'm going to go ahead and take all these coils and just change their color. So they look machined. Very easy to use there. It's a great tool from the App Store. And just to uh, 3D print preview this, jump straight into our STL file preview, and you'll see now I indeed do have physical threads based off of the thread specification that I had modeled inside of Inventor. So let's jump back to the App Store here. Um, there are tons of tools here. Flat Pattern Extractor, we could get multiple flat patterns from an assembly. Um, get all of the part flat patterns. There's a 3D PDF exporter. Completely built. Down here we have some Autodesk apps. Mesh Enabler, great if you're working with mesh files. Um, remote. Remote is a cool tool. If you ever need to remote into your work computer that is running Autodesk software basically will allow you to automatically remote. And so I'm going to jump to remote right here. We actually can share the current machine. I have additionally another machine that I'm running remote on right now. And this uses your Autodesk account. So in the destination computer here, I've logged into my Autodesk account. It's automatically uh, you know, an installed remote. And this is a remote session now. I'm not doing this on my current machine. It's very smooth, very easy to use. Um, the graphics are not jumpy. It does a really good job um, modeled over my remote connection and not had any issues with it. So here I'm just going to add a few flanges to my sheet metal part. Um, you know, maybe I'm at home. I need to remote into my work computer and make some changes and send them to the shop real quick. So even though I'm sitting at my laptop, I'm working on my work computer. So that's another great tool from Autodesk. Of course, that works for with any Autodesk programs, not just Inventor. Take a look here. We can actually filter this out per product. So I'm going to change over to the AutoCAD Exchange App Store. We have tons of apps here. Translator app. Uh, we have a tool called Flatten. Scatter. Um, so a lot of these tools uh, people have written and uploaded to the store. You can upload your own tools there. You also notice some of them are free, some of them are paid. You can upload your tools and sell them for people to use. I'm going to take a look at a couple of these. So I've jumped over into AutoCAD, and I have several of these um, Exchange apps loaded. We're going to take a look at the Scatter tool first. So basically, I have a regular array here, but we want it to be a little more random. So let me split the array. And now I'm just going to start the Scatter command. Now, this is not a normal AutoCAD command, but once I added the Exchange app, it automatically enabled this tool. So we have several options here. We're just going to go through and 
do random scattering. And let's try it again. A different distribution. All right, so it's just randomly nudging those over. It's a pretty cool tool. There's a lot of uh, options you can use in it as well. Um, another simple tool I found was this flatten tool. So we have some polylines here. Um, I don't know what happened, but the Z values on my vertices are all messed up. And I really want to just flatten them. So he's, again, it's a command running right inside of AutoCAD. Select the polylines. Type in what elevation we want them to have. And so this time I'm going to use an elevation of one. Your new elevation. So we're going to switch gears again here. We're going to jump to cloud collaboration. We'll be using A360 Team for our cloud collaboration. If you haven't heard of A360 yet, it's a great tool for uploading 3D models, images, all kinds of engineering data, basically having a uh, live collaboration feed. So here you'll see we can, we can always save to our Autodesk or A360 Drive account. But what we're going to do here is actually upload to our A360 team. So we're just going to drag and drop. It's very easy to upload files. To the current project, my D3VU project. And so we see the file was successfully uploaded. I'm going to refresh. We will see the file. It's still processing right now. Um, after another refresh, a little bit more time, we'll actually see a preview for that file. I'm actually going to jump into a, another project here. We have a lot of stuff that's happened in this project in the past, so it shows a little bit more of the collaboration that we can do. So we have this nice activity feed here of everything that happens. We have a data area where we can filter out just to see the data that's in there, what people are involved in this project and collaborating. We can have a calendar, we can add uh, meetings and appointments, and even add these to our Outlook calendar or whatever we're using. One of the coolest things about A360 is the ability to collaborate on the 3D models. So here James has added a comment, and when I click on the comment, I zoom right into that area where the comment is. He wants um, a different clip. So I guess I will go ahead and take responsibility for that. Just add the comment. He'll be notified via email or the app that I have commented on this. And I might mention I'm showing here in the web browser, but we can also do the most of the same things inside of the A360 app right on a smartphone or a tablet. So very good for collaboration, even off-site. A couple other cool things we can do. Um, there's a nice section view. There's a lot of tools for viewing um, and modifying view of the 3D model. So rotate that slice, that section, and it's also snapping to predefined views. The reason I jumped to this view is because I'm a little concerned about this clamp positioning. So let me just get to a good view here. And I'm going to add a comment by capturing an image of the screen. And it's actually going to just grab that existing capture. Now I want to mention a few couple people specifically. So I'm going to mention James and Scott. Um, when I add their tags to the comment, they will be notified that a comment has been made to them immediately. So I can get some quick feedback on this. Otherwise, it will just go to the activity feed along with all the other, uh, all the other stuff as it will, anyways. So I'm going to go ahead and add that comment. They'll be notified, and we'll go on. So let's end that section view.
Another tool I think is pretty cool is this explode tool. If you have a fairly complex assembly, the explode tool works very well for exploding and seeing what's inside of there. You'll notice it explodes kind of in levels. The frame stays together longer and then explodes later on. Uh, pretty cool tool. Well, let's just look at some of the stuff we can do in A360. All right, so let's move on to our last topic, cloud design. For this, we'll be taking a look at Fusion 360. Fusion 360 is a great design tool. There's a lot of stuff we can do in it. You see all the environments here. We have modeling, we have rendering, we have cam, animation. Um, basically, we have modeling tools, assembling tools, sketching tools, all inside of this same environment. So what I'm going to do is jump to a project here and open some data that I've already started on. Um, actually, a lot of this was uploaded straight from Inventor. Um, we're also going to be modeling inside of Fusion 360 here. So we see we have access to all of the Inventor features if we do need to jump in and modify that. Jump to my modeling environment here. And again, we have several tools all in this main environment. So we are in an assembly. I'm going to go ahead and activate this screw. As you'll notice, the rest of my assembly becomes kind of inactive, but I can still see it. I actually want to isolate this component. So I'm going to do some design work on it. So inside of Fusion, we don't have to worry about what environment we're in. We just kind of start building. So I'm going to sketch. I just click where I want to sketch. And uh, I don't have to uh, just pick a rectangle and I start building it. It automatically starts the sketch for me. I'm finished with the sketch. I really like that it finds profiles for you. We can right click on that and do things like a press pool or an extrude right off of that profile. So a lot of fusion is kind of push pull. And we're dragging it out. You'll notice it kind of steps in some increments. If you want to get more accurate, just zoom in closer and you'll get finer increments. We're going to stick with 20 millimeter block on the end here. And I'd like to add a hole. So I'm just going to start the hole tool. Click where I want to add it. And just snap it to the middle of the face. So very intuitive. Heads up display kind of tools that run right on the canvas there for Fusion 360. All right, so I'm done with that part. I'm just going to activate the assembly um, top level design again. Now I want to get this handle over there in the right spot. Um, first thing I'm going to do, I, I kind of built this properly where it's at, so I don't want to worry about constraining it. I'll just lock all those pieces together as if they're one component. And now I'm going to use the joint tool here. So jump straight into that without even having to switch environments. And this is very similar to the joint tool. If you watched our first webinar that we covered on the mechanical design section, so we're going to add a Revolute joint. So very quick and easy. Now, I want to explore another idea that I had. I'm going to jump into this sculpting environment. We have direct access to this T-splines technology. Um, you may know from Inventor. Very easy to use inside of Fusion 360. So I'm, I'm just going to kind of eyeball it for now because I'm just kind of exploring a new shape. So. We'll go ahead and fine-tune this a little bit. I want a little bit more edges to work with. And then I'm going to set some nominal values here for the size. But this is going to be kind of a free-form object that I'm, I'm thinking of doing for a more grippy handle. Again, I don't want to, to switch or go to a different environment. It's just all inside of the same place. 
I'm going to double click on this edge to select the entire edge and we're going to use this fill hole tool to close off the ends. Double click on the bottom and do the same thing. To repeat. Now I'm going to double click to select a few of these loops. And this edit form tool is really versatile. We can do all kinds of things with it. Um, I'm going to be scaling these edges here. Kind of exploring some different shapes. Um, the cool thing about it is so quick and easy to use. Try something out. If you don't like it, you just hit undo and you can go back to the last version. I like this shape. I think it's a little thick in the middle, so let's take it down a little bit more. And actually, I want to uniformly scale everything, so we can just double click any face to grab the entire solid. All right, let's take a look at what this looks like in the context of our assembly. I'm just going to unisolate that. And let's move it around a little, get a little closer to where it should be. You can see what it looks like. All right. I'm not sure if I like it or not. But it only took me a couple minutes to explore that. We're going to go ahead and hide it for now and turn our regular handle back on. All right. Um, what I want to do now, we have some predefined views in here, but um, I want to get a, a nicer looking preview of this object. So we're going to actually jump to the rendering environment. And we don't have to open a new program or do anything like that. A lot better visual quality here. You can see really nice textures. Very easy to change the lighting in the scene. And just to show you what we're doing here, it's as if our object is actually in this environment so that our lighting and everything will update. Um, so Fusion 360 uses image based lighting for that. Um, very easy to use. The appearance is also very easy to use. It's all drag and drop, so if I want to change the way any of these objects look, let's just grab a new material, a different metal, and drag and drop. You can also do this for individual faces. So if I grab that individual face, we can drag a smoother metal onto it. In fact, that face is probably machine, so I'm going to go with uh, maybe a different. It looks a little more brushed. Then on the bottom, we have automatic full quality renderings that happen. Each time we save a new increment of our file, the, uh, the renderings are automatically ca calculated in the cloud and downloaded back to my computer here if I'm looking at the file. So very cool, the cloud rendering. Uh, we can also render basically any image we want at any time. You'll notice um, when I change the format, it starts requiring cloud credits. Uh, we can actually buy cloud credits online. You can buy them in uh, packages. We also will have some cloud credits available automatically for your subscription. So I'm going to just pick my own view instead of using one of those presets. Again, we have the cloud rendering tool right there. We can um, set it up, click start rendering. You'll notice the cloud rendering has started. Basically, this has been uploaded to the cloud and is now processing. When it's done, all I have to do is come back to this rendering environment and it will be there waiting for me. Very cool tools there for the uh, Fusion 360 rendering environment. We also have um, a nice, simple drawing environment here. And you'll notice it's very easy to get to. I can right-click any component. 
go to the new drawing option. I'm going to jump to a drawing I've already started here. And we'll do a couple things to this drawing. The uh, view, view creation tools be very familiar if you're using Inventor. Uh, we're just going to create some projected views here. Have a nice radial menu in this environment. Section view. And we just click to draw our section line and then continue to place the section view. So very easy to use. Go ahead and add some annotation to this, a few dimensions. We get nice snaps. Again, you'll be familiar with the midpoint, endpoint um, snapping glyphs from AutoCAD. Go ahead and add a radius down here. All right. Also, we have a quick, easy way to output additional formats. PDF or DFG for others. So that's a quick look at the cloud design tools in Fusion 360. So hope you got some useful information out of some of those tools. We have the uh, again the mobile apps, the Autodesk Exchange App Store, cloud collaboration with A360 team, and our cloud design with Fusion 360. So with that, we'll pass it back on to our webinar coordinator. Pretty informative. Uh, at this time, I just want to pose a couple of uh, polling questions here for you. So let's go ahead and get that going. Was this webinar a good use of your time? You would just answer yes or no and while we're doing that uh, everybody can check out d3tech.net for our upcoming webinars we have a bunch lined up all the way through October uh, we're gonna have a different presenter and a different uh, uh, host almost every time for you to uh, check out as we have these okay I see that everybody's answered I'm going to go ahead and close that polling question. I've got one more. Would you like a D3 representative to contact you regarding your specific questions and comments? Uh, for those of you that do select yes, we will be getting in touch with you one-on-one uh, -on -one, and uh, we'll go from there. Well, I want to thank you guys for your time and for attending today. Thanks again, Ryan. That was pretty good stuff. Uh, we invite you to come back on August 4th for the data management uh, virtual university with Simon Taprick as your host and Kim Hendricks as your presenter. And we hope you guys have a good rest of the day. Thank you.